Is it ever possible to draw from the imagination without using a reference picture? Oh boy, this is going to be quite a topic of discussion. Why is that? Well, because after much scouring, reading, thinking, and more scouring on the internet on opinions on this matter, my head cannot stop spinning. It just seems like everybody and their grandmother has a very strong opinion on the subject of drawing from the imagination, especially for beginner artists who are just getting started with their art journeys. Now, when I say drawing from the imagination, I'm really just talking about you are out somewhere or you're sitting on the couch and some matter of inspiration pops into your mind. You grab a sketchbook and you just start to draw. You don't have any reference. It's all just coming from your head. Now, the very topic of drawing from the imagination brings up tons and tons of opinions. Now, sometimes those opinions do match, but other times they recommend the complete opposite approach than their colleagues. Learn to draw first, then draw from the imagination. Draw what you see in your head, then learn to draw. Wait, how do I even draw what I see in my head? I have trouble drawing a stick figure from memory. How can I even draw something remotely good for my brain? And the best one that I have heard to this day, it's a talent thing. If you just don't have the drawing capabilities, you just don't got it. Well, thanks a lot. Needless to say, this question is sort of a hot button topic in the art community with lots of schools of thought that are just thrown in. So I want to take a step away from all these opinions and take a stab at this question myself. And from one artist to another, I want to give you my best opinion on the matter and steps you can use to improve your imagination drawing skills. And just to illustrate the point of drawing from the imagination, I'm actually drawing this girl that is just straight from my imagination. I don't have a reference with me. I'm just kind of winging it and having some fun with the features and breaking some rules of proportion so I can get a certain look for my character. Okay, here goes. How to draw from the imagination for beginners who aren't good at drawing things to begin with. Here's what I did. At a very young age, I looked at the world a bit differently than say my younger brother or my mom. When I looked at an object, I saw its general shape. A pencil looked like a cylinder with a cone on top. An ice cream cone looked like a cone with a circle on top. A house looked like a rectangle with a triangle on top. Hey, give me a break. I was five. But the point is, I was doing something that many, many successful artists also naturally tend to do. They tend to break down the world around them into basic shapes. And these shapes make it a bajillion times easier to draw and replicate onto paper or canvas. So really, shapes, shapes, shapes. One thing a lot of beginner artists struggle with is simplifying what they see. They tend to look at the whole object they are trying to capture and somehow work the details in there somewhere. Like, let's say someone who wants to learn to draw faces. They see the whole complex face shape, the shadows, the fine lines, the laugh lines, the cascading fountain of hair, the deep brooding eyes, and immediately a small sense of overwhelm sets in. How can I even capture all of this complexity on this face? Or better yet, what does this have to do with learning to draw from the imagination, Amanda? The answer lies in your perspective. The principles that I use to draw from a reference, I also use to draw from my imagination when I am slumped on the couch wanting to draw something cool and quick. Which leads me to my next point. Drawing is not a skill that you're born with. Rather, it's a consequence of good observation. And this is why I love using references, especially back when I was learning to draw. Wait. But using references is not using your imagination. Well, you, you're correct, but hear me out for a second. See, the imagination is that world we create that's filled with fantastical, weird, cool, awesome things. It can be nonsensical and totally crazy in concept, but it is your imagination and great things have come from your imagination. Plus a really cool thing about imagination is its ability to break reality and create new rules. So let's take a step back and ask, what rules is the imagination even breaking? And the answer to that, the rules that you are breaking are the rules that you learn from drawing what you actually see in reality from a reference. Basically, this is my roundabout way of saying drawing from the imagination is a wonderful form of expression, but in order to get better at it, you first need to understand the rules of drawing so you can break them later with your imagination. You catching my drift? 
using a reference isn't such a bad thing. And let me illustrate that with a quick example for you. Let's say your ultimate goal is to draw a girl's face from your imagination. You see what she looks like in your head, you can imagine her freckles, her smile, her bright eyes, everything. My suggestion would be to first grab a picture of a girl via the interwebs or a willing model, all with consent of course. Sit your butt down with a tracing paper and pencil and observe. Take a look at the features on your model's face, for example the eyes. The model's eyes have a distinct look about them. What general shape do you see? Are her eyes round? Are they almond shaped? Place your, your tracing paper on top of the picture and trace the outline of her eye. What does that shape look like? Repeat this for other features in the drawing and observe the resulting shape. Hold up. So are you endorsing tracing, Amanda? Isn't that cheating? Well, my beautiful queen bee, when you are trying to learn how to draw, tracing is not exactly cheating at all. It's highlighting and forcing you to see shapes in your drawings. And this really is the whole point of the exercise. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And one big, big thing I always emphasize with people who are learning to draw in general is that think big shapes first, details last. Once you've got a general shape down, try adding in the additional details within and around the shape. So for example, going back to our model's facial features, her eyes, once you've gotten the general shape of her eye down, add the iris, the pupil, the eyelashes, the eye flaps, and the eyebrows that go along with it. And of course, if you're having any trouble, simply place the tracing paper on top of the photo that you are referencing and discern the general shape from that. See, it all comes back down to shapes and looking at it as a bigger rudimentary picture. And once you have done that, you can take a step back and admire your work. You successfully drew a facial feature from a reference and learned some fundamental lessons along the way. You created the big shape first, which was the shape of the eye, and then added in the smaller details later. Whether you know it or not, this is the exact progression artists use to draw and paint. They begin big, and then they finish with details last. So this makes you a super drawing pro now, right? Well, you're not completely out of the woods yet. You have to teach your hands and your mind with practice and look at things in a certain perspective. As a wee little artist, I myself use the shape recognition method that I just talked about when learning to draw and I practiced incessantly. I would draw and redraw the same feature over and over and over and over again ad nauseum. And what ended up happening was my, my fingers and my hands got so used to holding my pencil in a certain way when making those features, making lines a certain way to create a specific feature. And before long, I was drawing eyes from memory without needing a reference. <laughs> See what I did there? Way to bring it back, Amanda. So my point is, just observing shapes does not a great drawer make. Practice and repetition is involved. The more you train your eyes and your hands to break down the complex object and translate it into a sketch, the quicker you'll see patterns and the better able you will be able to draw from memory. Now, of course, I am simplifying the entire process, but this is to help show you the progression of drawing skills in an artist. And as much as I did like drawing from my imagination when I first started out, my drawings looked, um, it, it looked disappointing to me. It felt like no matter what I saw in my head, I could not will my pencil to capture that essence on paper. And it wasn't until I learned the fundamentals of drawing and simplifying what I saw that I really began to master drawing from my imagination. I would suggest practicing with reference pictures and YouTube video tutorials and know that these things do take time to develop. You cannot expect to draw like a pro overnight. So be patient and kind with yourself. I mean, hell, it took me 20 years to master my skills and draw with grace and ease. It's just that I learned through practice and observation and my hands are now used to the feel of a pencil. I didn't want to rush through the process. Instead, I just looked at every pencil stroke as a stepping stone towards my goals, despite how my final piece came out. And that, my friends, is how you do it. So what did you think of this opinion on how to draw from the imagination? Do you agree? Do you have anything that you would like to add to this? Comment below and let me know my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, darling queen bees. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, you know what to do so that you can see more videos like this from me to you in the future. Remember to love yourselves and always have fun with your art. See you all next time. Bye.